Matt Donald here, folks. Worst microphone alert, because my microphone I normally use to record this is currently still packed in luggage in my car from a trip I recently went on, and I need to get this out quickly, so the microphone from my webcam it is so very, very professional. And what am I going to do with this worst quality that gives new listeners their first impression of this wonderfully professional and sophisticated show. Well, I want you to subscribe to my Patreon, of course, at patreon.com slash matthewdonald, where we discuss pop culture featuring prehistoric animals, sometimes in flimsy ways, sometimes in ways that are a bit of a stretch. And this month, it's the most wonderful time of year, not Christmas, hell no, not Christmas. It is time for our annual Pacific Rim episode, because the dinosaurs were implied to be kaiju in that universe, and that movie is so god dang awesome that I want to talk about it all the time with everyone every year, and that's what we do, so check that out, as well as uh, another episode about Jurassic World the Game on the phone. Uh, that'll come out soon. It was meant to come out last month, but, you know, pfft, life. Christmas! Holidays! You know, the holiday season. Hard time for everyone. Link is in the description before you can sign up to the Patreon. Thank you for your support, and have a good day! Hey, 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 hey. Roar, growl, snarl, bellow. Welcome to Paleobites, the podcast where intelligence drifts like the continents. Yeah. My name is Matthew Don. Each week, I and a rotating series of guest co-hosts talk about and rate a genus of prehistoric animal, be it dinosaur, mammal, arthropod, and so on. This week, I'm joined by the only person on the show who I think I've talked to about non-animals on this show. Like, whenever we're doing thing that's not animal, like the flower or the tree or the fungus, it's you. Yeah, I suppose <laughs> I do have a unique set of interests. Yep, it's Natasha Crack. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Pretty good. So, I'm so like, the, you know, I always say, like, we talk about a different genus of prehistoric animal. And it's like, there are so many times where I kind of bend that. Well, not even kind of bend it. Sometimes I just flat out break it. Sometimes it's not a genus. Sometimes it's like a family. That's happened once. Um, sometimes it's not prehistoric. It's modern. <laughs> or or it's, not, or it's not necessarily modern. But I mean, it is. I mean, it's still extinct. But like, we talked about the Tasmanian tiger and the dodo on here on the show before. Uh. Uh, my dad and I did an episode about the passenger pigeon. Nice. <laughs> so that's really not prehistoric. And so it's not even an animal. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, and watch as I'll just do like one of these days for an April Fool's. I think I checked. These those episodes come out on Tuesday. And April Fool's Day is on a Tuesday on 2025. So oh. watch as that episode we're going to do like the sunflower or something. Works for me. <laughs> it's a living plant <laughs> rather than an extinct animal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, time, mid Pleistocene to current, like er, current Anthropocene or whatever that we're in now. I think it's I think it's still technically called the Holocene, but people, some people are like, oh, we changed too much. Anthropocene. Yeah, we'll let the scientists argue that one out. Yeah. Uh, we'll all sit back with a bag of popcorn. A uh, bag of Mountain Dew popcorn, as I found out <laughs> exists recently. You ever been to those popcorn shops where like they sell different types of popcorn? Um, it's been a There's while. one like pretty close to here. I might go there after, actually. <laughs> it's like the puppy chow popcorn mm. you know it's like puppy chow is like you're not like obviously you know what i'm talking oh, about oh yeah yeah, yeah the i made chocolate. it as a kid yeah oh i love it oh so good uh, with the check cereal yeah checks the, and the like chocolate, the chocolate butterscotch. yeah 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 oh good so good good stuff uh, and then some people have like there's like saltier popcorn there's like cheddar popcorn there's like jalapeno popcorn dill pickle popcorn <laughs> uh i'm not a pickle guy a lot of people like pickles i don't like pickles it's the acidity uh, same with mustard same thing i don't like it I've only recently taken to some mustards. Like okay. I like to dip my chicken nuggets in honey mustard. Oh, uh, okay. Well, let me. Or there are some cheeses that pair really nicely with a whole grain mustard. Uh huh. But in small quantities. Right. Oh, okay. I, I I'd like to if I was going to contribute anything to the culinary world, I want to make a sauce. I want there to be the Matt sauce that people come to. It's like oh, we're going to have wings. Where I was like, is Matt bringing his sauce? <laughs> I could teach you to make an Alfredo from scratch. Right. Oh, I like that. With rest and use a restaurant recipe that my dad has taught me well of course it's not healthy well it's well, delicious well, why would it be no we're not here for health <laughs> it's artery clogging delicious yeah. i mean I, even ironically this is a show called paleo bites we're not here for healthy vegan eating or paleolithic <laughs> eating <laughs> that is one of the reasons why i call it the, sh the show that to confuse people <laughs> like oh this is about the paleolithic diet <laughs> so, no 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 
uh, but it's about bite-sized introductions to paleontology. So, uh, so what quarter of paleontology are we off? We're to talking today? about a little gremlin guy that you've recommended. Oh yeah, the little thing that looks like Gizmo's prehistoric cousin. Yeah, it's like a little gliding lizard thing called Silurosaur Avis. <laughs> Uh, which means hollow lizard grandfather. Yes, for I real. remember seeing that thing in my book of dinosaurs that I used for sketch references. Yeah. And I was like, what the f*** <laughs> is this? <laughs> 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 Uh, no, absolutely. I, I definitely. Uh, yeah, no, it's it's something. <laughs> but what the it is. The first thing I thought was, geez, <laughs> did the scientists uh, try to breed a gremlin? <laughs> yeah, don't feed it after midnight. You know, like, don't don't get it wet. <laughs> I only saw Gremlins recently. I saw it at a theater. Actually, it was this theater that was playing old movies, like in the theater. It's like uh, I watched it with my friend Laura. It's funny to watch an old movie for the first time in a movie theater. It makes it like a new movie. Because <laughs> I was not prepared by how like dark, but also how funny that movie is. I love the part where the Gremlins are rampaging and they like, they sing the Christmas songs. That one person then kill them, <laughs> and then that one time where they're playing poker, one of them cheats, the other one shoots. <laughs> I, I distinctly remember that. Ooh, and that oh, poor man. wait bartender, she's just treating them like they're normal customers, but she's trying to rush and get their orders <laughs> out. And then she tells that weird story about how she lost her dad and then realized there was no Santa Claus because of that. Like yeah. that's that's. <laughs> <f> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Anyway, so type is a will. Oh God, we we guilt to sword a group of gliding neodiapsid reptiles that include this guy and a few others like it. As if, as a heads up, neodiapsids include all reptiles, barring some really early and primitive ones, as well as birds. Because why the hell not? Why the hell not? Size fourteen inches to thirty five centimeters long. The little guy, you can probably keep it on your shoulder. Like, probably. Yeah. Uh, like some psychotic parrot. Yeah. Diet's carnivore, specifically insectivore. And guess what those eat? <laughs> <laughs> Time late Permian, 260 to 251 million years ago. Which means, yep, they got et by the great dying. Ah, <laughs> oh, darn it. Uh, they shouldn't feel bad, though. A lot of things got et by the Permian extinction. About 95% of all life on Earth, in fact. You know, it was kind of bad. Yeah, that is kind of bad. Yeah, I could, I could survive with them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're about to find out. Apparently, we're killing species right now at the about, about the same rate as they were during the Permian extinction. So yay! Joy. You been yeah. <laughs> uh, subscribe to nineteen twenty six pop culture parishes, the TV show Primeval and TV documentary Ancient Earth. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So uh, for some bizarre reason, reptiles have always wanted to fly. Yeah. Like you got pterosaurs, of course, but then you got some birds descended from dinosaurs, and also reptiles. And you got the scansoroterigids, like ye, you know, ye the little yes. go goblin, like gargoyle lizard bat. Yep. And you got the little otties, like Longusquama charovipteryx, that might have also flown or glided potentially. You know, charovipteryx, that's the one that flew with its legs. Oh, geez. It spread them out like a freaking whore and just like <laughs> flapped with them near all. I'm not, I sound like I'm excited. Look, hold on. <laughs> charovipteryx. Charovipteryx meme is the first thing that comes. <laughs> Probably about all the. Oh, God. Let's see if I can. Yeah, okay. That, those jokes write themselves. Yeah. It's like, yay! <laughs> spread <laughs> spread those legs, ladies. Uh, <laughs> no, actually. Ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard worse at the truck. You're yeah, not yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm in a committed relationship. Uh, it's good. Things are good. I'm, I'm good. I have regular sex. Anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you know, there should be some other... It's like, so why do they want to fly? Give the other animals a chance. Like, bats have only come in because they fulfill a different niche than birds. But only other than bats, every other animal that has flown has been reptiles. Except for insects, I guess. Every yeah. other vertebrate that has been flown... There has, we go. Every other vertebrate. Has flown has been reptiles. Bats are the only ones. Uh, what about amphibians? Why don't you have, like, frogs flying? I'm gonna don't them give them ideas. There's so, some frogs that can glide with uh, their... If, well, it's like imagine like a Charvo Victorix style frog that like jumps and then uses, spreads its back legs out and become like wings. <laughs> There's an idea for you, speculative biologists. But here we have another flying slash gliding reptile, one completely unrelated to the others, meaning a bunch of different group of reptiles really wanted to get their asses off the ground by any means possible. <laughs> I guess slithering gets old fast or hurts or something. So we got yeah, bust. fossil of this creature are found with long rod like ossifications projecting outwards from the body. As an ex uh, sort of like an extension, of, not as an extension of the ribs, but as a structure that was further supported by additional phalanges in the fourth digit of the hands, which presumably connected with these structures by flexing its abdominal muscles to give it a structure in addition to uh, helping grasp on tree bark. Ah. It could um, 
furl and unfurl these wing-like structures by flexing his abdominal muscles? It really sounds like it's just showing off. Yeah, uh, probably. So look at my abs. I'm so I mean, sh- we are convinced it's uh, Gizmo's prehistoric cousin, yeah, I'm right? so shredded I can grow wings and just from the power of my swole abdominal muscles. It's like <laughs> Red Bull. Oh, <Arr, laughs> it's <getting> me wings. <laughs> yeah, the Red Bull's really not an energy drink. Yeah. I just got it. It says it gives you wings because it gives you energy. I'm really dumb. I am really dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I've always said that before. I may be intelligent, but I am not smart. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, I know. All right, so, um, these guys use this ability to like, climb trees and catch insects and presumably to avoid whatever predators could reach the level, which I imagine wasn't too many at this point. Because like, there weren't any other flying creatures, so the trees they climbed... Uh, the, but the trees they climbed include one such species that I talked about, Natasha and I here. Uh, I've talked about one of the few plants featured on the show, Glossopterus. Remember that? Yes. We were talking about Glossopterus? Yeah. It was fun. Just lived a peaceful life, you know, catching bugs, avoiding predation. So we're all having a grand old time. <laughs> uh, but who knows? Maybe if the Permian extinction hadn't happened, they could have taken their wing specialization further. But alas, we'll never know. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah. So, but Solaris or Avis, man, it's just, yeah. What is this thing? I mean, it's a gremlin. That's what it is. But, it's gremlin. I mean, it doesn't have fur like Gizmo does, but... It probably would have evolved him. Hey, is gremlin's racist? Because doesn't he get that thing from, like, a weird, like, e- typical East Asian sort of oh, shot? What? It's kind of like that part in Freaky Friday where, like, they switch bodies by going to a Chinese restaurant and this person does some Chinese magic to make them switch bodies. It's like, it's showing, like, the other culture is magical or something, which is kind of a weird stereotype. I mean, it could be Mel Brooks style. That is true. Where it's well, what do you, what do you mean? What specifically? I mean, have you seen History of the World Part One? Well, yeah, no, I do like how he makes fun of literally everyone. My favorite part of that, where he has people of those races or whatever act out those stereotypes. That's true. My favorite part is when um it shows the caveman and has Orson Welles narrating to add some <laughs> uh, gravitas and authenticity to it. Uh, but then he's like, it shows the cave painting. It's like these were the first artists. Followed shortly by the first critic, and then another uh, caveman pees on it. <laughs> 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 and then there's he has Moses at one point. He's holding three tablets. He says, "I give to you from God the fifteen, and then one of the tablets falls and smashes. <laughs> the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Honestly, that is one of my favorite movies. Oh yeah, there was a sequel series on Hulu that came out recently. It's probably not any good, but Mel Brooks was still one of the writers, so <laughs> the dude's 97 years old, I think. And he's still writing sharp-witted comedy. You know he's a mind, he was a minesweeper in World War II? That's cool. Yeah, he was, he was a veteran. Oh, no wonder his humor's bad. Uh, yeah, he was, that's just such a dangerous job. Also, he trolled Nazis back when Nazis were trying to take over the world. He, like, he... Uh, they, they they were opposing camps, and they would pl- the Nazis would blare out like propaganda their way, and Mel Brooks blared through their speakers Jewish folk music <laughs> right back at them <laughs> because he was a badass. <laughs> Gotta love it when people will troll each other like that. When he dies, the amount of movie marathons that he'll that'll be there. Oh, those are so. And also, what is he gonna write on his epitaph on his tombstone? <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna be great. <laughs> He's still so because we did an advertisement for Race of the World Part Two on Hulu. He's like, watch it or whatever. You know, I already got paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> still so with it. <laughs> I mean, at the end of Part One, he did try to put out a trailer for we're Part Two. Jews, we're Jews in space, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Which he later used the tune for Men in Tights. So <laughs> the irony to um, the modern political America was somebody tried to make. A comment about Jewish space labor. Oh yeah, for sure. And Mel Brooks had already done it in a whole Oh yeah, way. well he's on top of that and sort of thing. That's like uh, and he... <laughs> <sighs> So uh. Solarosaur Avis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this prehistoric creature we're supposed to be talking about. Yeah, we're talking about gremlins and we're talking about Mel Brooks who had nothing to do with gremlins. <laughs> that was uh, Chris, Chris Columbus. Not the Christopher Columbus. <laughs> The writer of <laughs> who should be the only Chris Columbus we all should celebrate. Here, here. The writer and director of Home Alone and the first two Harry Potter movies. <laughs> and Home Alone 1 was a brilliant piece of work. I've only seen Home Alone 2. My fiance showed it to me. Uh, the first one is I've pretty heard. much slapstick comedy. Yeah. Second one, unfortunately, does have a cameo from one Mr. Trump in it. But <laughs> yeah. you can just ignore that part. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, but uh, other than that, it was good. I liked um, what's his name? Uh, Tim Curry is like the head of the uh, hotel trying to get him out. Uh. Tim Curry always plays such a riveting uh, theatrical role. <laughs> He definitely has fun with it. I love that part. You ever, you ever seen that part of um, Command and Conquer where, you know, because they always those have those full mo- full motion video cut scenes where it's just actual people. Like, you know, and he just hams it up. It's like, we're going to the one place where communism hasn't touched space. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tell he's having fun with it. You can tell when an actor's honestly having fun with it. It's them. just full on ham and cheese, which Laura Soravis probably would love. Uh, probably. I would go for some ham and cheese. I'm hungry. Oh, that actually does sound kind of good right now. Yeah, anyways, well, let's write this and get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> write one of 65 million. I'm going to write like 55 million. It's cool. It man. deserves it. Yeah, it's like it's a cool little creature that like gl- gl- glid when gl- glid gl- glided. <laughs> Why is that such a hard word? To say? <laughs> when no other creature could could even fly. So it was probably pretty safe up there. It probably just fell sometimes, I guess. Probably. But like fall from a great height. It's little, you know, 14 <laughs> inches. Uh, yeah, that's cool. And then it just and it took the world's greatest mass extinction to kill it. So, <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like it belongs in a modern sci-fi movie. Absolutely, uh, it was in Primeval, uh, yeah. which is a show I need to watch. Uh, I've heard. I good... need to watch again. It's been a while since I've watched. I love the future predators they had. Where Those the cre- were terrifying. The creepy future predators. Yeah, it's like creatures from not millions of years in the future, from the past millions of years in the future. So. Yeah, those were terrifying. Yeah, First yeah. time I saw them. Oh yeah, for sure. All right, well, that's it for this week. If you don't get a hold of the show, you can contact me at MattD at MatthewDonCreator.com or PaleBytesPodcast at gmail.com, PaleBytesPod on Twitter, and PaleBytesPodcast on Instagram. I love how no one calls it X. It's Twitter. <laughs> it will always be Twitter. It's always Twitter. It will always be Twitter. Elon Musk, that elongated Musk rat, will never take that away from us. Exactly. <laughs> so, uh, but yes. Yeah. So, um, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the moment. I'm at NK Arts and Crafts. Yeah. Um, again, depending on how busy work is, depends on what kind of posting I do. But I've always got different kinds of arts I'm posting. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. Oh, that's that's neat. Um, she's got some good stuff in there. She also illustrated my books, my Mickey's Oak books, which uh, you can buy on print to Kindle and do not have Slurs or Avis in it. But if they were in it, I can imagine they'd be like, Recon, they can have like radar dishes on them or something. As they <laughs> scout or something. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> ah, I give you ideas for the next one. Exactly, exactly. All these were before dinosaurs, so they couldn't be there. If I want to be accurate with my dinosaurs with laser gun story. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. We'll say the invariant episode of Paleo Bites. What do lizards make? I don't know. A lot of only a couple of families of uh, lizard can vocalize. Oh, that was me trying to do my tongue up. <laughs> All the spit. Anyways, bye.